All right, guys, welcome back to the Rev Limiter podcast. I don't have much of an intro for this one, but I'm here with a pretty special and cool dude. One of the guys that came up in the community the past like year or two. Straight from Michigan, my guy, tipping back. Good to see you, brother. Good to see you too, my guy. I'm gonna ask you five questions really quick. Not, don't, don't think too hard about them. I'm just gonna rattle them off really quick. Um, where are you from? I'm from Fenton, Michigan. Okay. Where's that from? It's Detroit? like 15 minutes south of Flint. Uh, okay. About an hour north of Detroit. Okay, cool. Um, favorite drink? Uh, Corona. Corona? Yeah. Damn, you and Eli <laughs> both said Corona. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, that's my go-to. You guys are both this 2020 Corona shit. Coronas. How old are you? I'm 25. 25? about that for a second. <laughs> 25, 26 this year. Okay. Riding age? Um, I started probably when I was about, I would say 12. 12? On dirt bikes, yeah. Okay. Damn. Yeah. That's early. <laughs> I mean, I'd been on and off of like four wheelers and dirt bikes with my aunt and my, my aunt's side of the family, but I got my first dirt bike and learned to ride right. two wheels when I was about 12 or 13. Favorite rider? Ooh. Doesn't have to be stunt rider. It could be fucking a racer. I'm or something like that. Veggie all day. Veggie? Yeah. Okay. Street stunter veggie. It's like you, never yeah. gets old. Never gets old. He's out of he's out of the bay for anyone and who doesn't anything, know. Yeah. yeah. For anything. for anyone who doesn't know veggie is uh definitely a killer. I mean, a style on his own as well. Crazy. With any type of trick or right. speed, slow circles. I saw you just got a Harley. Right? Uh yeah, I think it's a Dyna. A Dyna? Yeah. Yeah. That's gonna be kind of cool. I think just seeing just it. Yeah. Holy shit! Right. <laughs> <laughs> and who knows what's in store? The, the last one of the questions is <clears throat> bikes. What what bikes do you ride? I ride a uh, one CBR six hundred F four I. The F four I Honda gang. Yeah. All right, cool. The F four I. All right, we're done with our little questions. Why the F four I? As you know me, I'm a little bit biased. Um, I've always kind of gravitated towards Honda more than anything else just growing up uh, riding dirt bikes and quads um mostly it was all honda my aunt's side of the family was, was most mostly honda my grandmother and i believe my mother as well and my uh, grandpa also rode honda really uh, cruiser street bikes holy shit and then um when i first started getting into riding that was kind of what influenced me to gravitate gravitate towards hondas just because okay. my family had always owned them and uh, right. I always kind of looked at like the front end of the, the F4Is versus any other bike. And I wasn't really familiar with any other type of street bike besides looking into the F4Is. Like all the West Coast dudes that I used to watch ride, like Veggie and a lot of those dudes. They were on always, F4Is. Always, always, all of them were on F4Is. So I just kind of looked they at were. that thing and I was like, yeah, yeah. man, that looks fucking dope. <laughs> and then Wes... And veggie. Weston, veggie. They all got six three sixes. Yeah. Everyone got six three sixes. You guys. Every single one of them. <laughs> you, guys. you guys. But we all know that they all miss them. We all Yeah, know. yeah. I mean, yeah. FRIs are cool in their own. I mean, I've rode them before and I definitely understand why people like them. They're tanks. They're they're so hard to kill and they're dependable, you know. Yeah. I get it. I got it. Uh, but and you know what? When I saw G Tech do his 500 foot stoppy and get his AM stoppy school on a stock F4I front end, I was like, okay, it can be done. That argument yeah. has kind of gone out the window too. Of like, the F4Is aren't great for stoppies. So. I've, I mean, personally, I mean, I haven't been in the game very long, but I have never seen anyone roll that long on no uh, F4I. <laughs> he's at least stock front end. He's crazy. Really, any F4I to. To, for that matter, I yeah. Mean, but I don't really know a lot of uh, a lot I mean, of guys who have the nine five four front ends, right? Yeah, they put nine five four yeah. front ends. Uh, okay. That's a typical swap on them. But um, I don't really know. Like, I'm not really familiar with a lot of like uh, OGs in the stunt scene. Like, I didn't really grow up watching any. Uh, like, a lot of guys uh, that are newer to the scene uh, kind of watch older stunt riding videos, like right. the Star Boys. I didn't really know what any. I do now. Uh, yeah. I'm aware of what. what what, what that is now and uh, old teams that um, were around, but I didn't really ever watch anything like that. It was kind of just based off Instagram from what I was watching when I first how, started. How long have you been stunting for? 
Um, I started legitimately taking stunt riding seriously as far as uh, trying to stay in the lot and like learn balance point and do seat standards and uh, get a base of tricks uh, probably middle of the season in 2018. Okay. Yeah. Holy so shit. probably about three and three and a half years and some change or so. Okay. Right about three years, yeah. Yeah. 2021. But if you take out winter, I mean, we only have about three and a half, four months. Yeah. So yeah. it's definitely a lot less than that. Well, you, than you've, that but. At least this past year or two, you started the travel and stuff. And oh, yeah. What yeah. do you think as far as traveling? What's your top three cities? Uh, Don't mean to put you on the spot or nothing. Chicago but. is number one. Always. Okay. Always. Um, You're not just saying that because I'm here, right? No. Okay. Absolutely love Chicago. I don't yeah. know. Just different here. The cool. streets, the community, just how involved everyone is with bikes, um, just how welcoming and humbling the experience is every time I come here. Yeah, um, we got a good group of guys to. I would say uh, Fort Lauderdale is definitely one of one of my bigger ones up there too. Um, Hell yeah. I haven't really traveled to a significant amount of states, but uh, definitely they got a good Saint, scene going Saint on Louis in Fort Lauderdale too. too. St. Louis was uh, is always fun. So Louis. that was my first yeah. ever stunt ride. RLC. Yeah, and uh, 2018 wow. was my first one. That Holy was like the shit. first. I mean, I'd <laughs> ridden with like packs of like 20, 30 bikes at a time. Right into the fire locally, but uh, yeah, I just went out to. <laughs> <laughs> I skipped it all and I went yeah. to a pack of 20 yeah. to ROC. I think it was a good uh, break in for me as oh far as start God. riding goes because, you know, I went to that ride and then uh, coming out here, you wow. know, it, it, it was definitely, it's definitely, all, you always get that feeling when you're with that many bikes yeah. and just see yeah. just so much chaos going on. But, uh, it yeah. puts riding into a different perspective. It was <laughs> unbelievable and it was absolutely mind blowing going to that ride. <laughs> it was a spicy weekend to say the least. I bet. Yeah. yeah. I was there. I just don't, I, I get the ROC years like mixed up. You know what I mean? Cause yeah. it's like we meet, we're at the same place the whole time and right. we take the same route yeah. and like you see a lot of the same people, but every year, like you just kind of like, there's always bound to be a couple really bad accidents there. Oh, and that's what makes RLC like RLC. There's yeah, and I didn't balance. really, I didn't really know anybody when I came out there. I mean, I had a few friends online on Instagram and Facebook that I had communicated with right. prior going out to ROC, but I was just uh, nobody in the community. You know, I didn't really have friends all over the states like I do now, and uh, it was definitely. Uh, just a humbling experience seeing how many people were connected you know i just right. like i had no idea that stunt riding was so big like that i mean i knew Dude. that this ride was obviously going to be big i had watched a lot of youtube videos on it and uh, seen a lot of posts about it or whatever people promoting it and right. you know, a lot of people talking about going but right. i had no clue <laughs> about anything stunt riding related so for that to be my first ride was definitely very helpful yeah. to, to get out and uh, start meeting people. Yeah, you dove off the deep end on that one. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so I guess um, one of the, like the more in-depth questions that you can take wherever you want to go, um, if you want to call it a sport, where do you see the sport going? I don't know if you want to call it a sport or a culture or whatever. Where do you see it going in the future? <clears throat> um, I'm talking one year, 10 year, 20 year. Where do you see it going? Where do I see stunt riding going? I think that, I think it's just getting bigger and bigger and bigger, mm -hmm. um, especially for every city that is on the rise for um, newer rides. Um, being that I, I've been to a, a few new rides this year uh, that I've been going on for uh, quite a few years now, wow. seeing new rides come up, it just, uh, it's nice to see that everybody's continually supporting this sport, and I would call it a sport. Um, but I think that uh, from the public eye, it's definitely um, questionable, as always. Obviously, some people like it, some people don't, as Eli said before. But yeah, um, I think that it's definitely starting to take off as a lot more of a normal thing to the community, as far as from yeah. the public eye. I think a lot of people are kind of uh, scared to uh, 
approach this whole stunt riding thing in like a respectable manner because they don't really know anything about it. Mm-hmm. But um, I think with within the next few years, it'll definitely be definitely be more normalized in a lot more places that more are mainstream. that are starting to do uh, more rides. Uh, the communities are starting to see more of these wheelies and, and yeah. people kind of just throwing these rides and doing stuff like that. I definitely, I definitely think you're right on the size and the amount of people getting into it like over the past couple of years just in my hometown or just going out of town and stuff like comparing like dallas this year compared to like dallas like two years ago when i first went like the sea's just growing and i don't know if that's i don't know if that's because of the riders in it i don't know if it's because of the companies backing it i don't know if it's because of the social media growing i don't know i think it's just a big part uh in youth i mean a lot of the youth that's coming up, I mean, it's just starting to become a more normalized thing. I mean, stunt riding is not new by any means. Right. I mean, some people, to some people, you could say it's new, um, but I think stunt riding is starting to become more mainstream. And I think yeah. a lot of people, more people are starting to get interested in it, especially uh, considering all the people, all the younger uh, dudes that are doing or women, dudes, whatever you, whatever you want to, he, she, they, <laughs> they, yeah. uh, that are doing uh, pedal bike wheelies, uh, yeah. stuff like that. I think that's a big influence on kids yeah. that are trying to up. Uh, a lot of kids, uh, you know, look up to yeah. stunt riders. They think that doing wheelies is cool, and uh, you know, as long as you play it's safe. The pedal bike scene too, man. Holy crap! I like, know. I when I was growing up as a kid, I, I was coming up in the BMX world. You know, I was BMX racing and stuff. Mm-hmm. I, that was never a thing. The big, the big rippers, the wheelie pet, like that was not a thing. That w- it was you were hitting the trails, or you were in the park, or you were on the track, and it was like you were jumping, jumping, or jumping, just in different ways. Right. Like I didn't see, I didn't see any type of pedal bike movement like how I do online nowadays. Yeah. I, mean, holy I feel shit. like that's even just so new for me to see. I didn't yeah. know that that was so big. I mean, even in, even in Detroit, Nuts. that's about an hour from me. They have a the, scene for pedal bikes. Yeah, they no, do rideouts. <laughs> like they're doing rideouts like oh every week God. now, um, and it's it's crazy to see for me because I, I was the same way. I mean, when I was in high school, middle school, um, I had like a BMX bike, you know, with the short right. seat yeah. and like wide bars, and brake cable, or whatever. And um, I would always hang out at this little apartment complex spot that had like uh, big double dirt jumps in the back and stuff. And everybody would kind of hang out back there, but nobody was just like doing just strictly wheelies, especially with like uh, disc brakes. They have like fluid in the brakes and stuff. That was not a thing. Yeah. And then like these big wheel bikes. I mean, when I was in high school, I I remember seeing uh, quite a few uh, guys rock the bigger wheel like mountain bikes yeah but it was never just strictly for wheelies especially not out in the street so yeah. it's definitely a whole different ballpark but a lot of respect to all those guys absolutely that do it because i've personally tried to wheelie uh, <laughs> on one of those sc bikes or the big flyers or yeah, whatever you call them big rippers and it takes a lot of work so I absolutely everybody's that, that's doing ralph louis i don't even know what the hell you yeah all the tricks that they do on them but it's just mind blowing uh, trying to wheelie one of those bikes and then yeah. looking at all these kids just and they have massive rideouts too. Oh yeah, massive hundreds of people. yeah, hundreds probably of thousands people. of those yeah. big ones. Like yeah. I've seen like the ones that like R R Blocks or whatever his name is out in uh, New mm-hmm. York puts on. Yeah, I'm like holy crap. Yeah, where are all these kids coming from? And there are a lot, a lot of kids. So that's I mean, you think stunting is a new sport? I mean, stunting was around at least when we were kids, you know, like I knew stunt riding yeah. was going on when I was doing BMX, um, but that bike life scene is definitely new, new, like the bike, bicycles yeah. life scene. And it's, it's just like, it's, it's just like spreading like wildfire. Absolutely. And I think that Absolutely. with our, with our sport stunt riding, uh, you know, it's like an acquired taste for people. It's not for everybody. And obviously uh, with anything, it's not, you know, um, wheeling uh, street uh, little pedal bikes is not for everybody either but yeah. I think um, having a pedal bike is a lot easy to acquire than a stunt bike so Agreed. I think that's also Agreed. why it's just yep. it just took off and just got yeah. so big because it's um, you know some of those bikes are expensive but I mean you can wheel yeah. a little Anything. you know cheap Walmart bike $20, you know, 20 bike. bucks so. yep 
it's definitely cops cool. cops look at a bicycle wheeling a lot different than a motorcycle too yeah but i think that's i think i don't know there's a given it's push and pull and give and take with it because there's a lot of the similar issues that we have stunt riding in the city that the yep. police are doing the same thing with yeah, pedal bikes with I see these them young kids out. and it's, yeah. it's sometimes disappointing to see you know there's yeah. good and bad with everything uh, police or you know people doing wheelies and, and whatnot but it's definitely yeah. uh, taken off like crazy <laughs> take yourself out of your shoes for a second for this next question um you're 16 years old or 18 years old whatever you just got your motorcycle license you want to get into stunt riding um what what is your advice to that 16 18 year old dude or girl or whatever that wants to get into stunt riding that you know doesn't really have any clue where to go with it what, what's your advice for that person um as far as getting invested in stunt riding i think the biggest thing for me when i started was trying to communicate with just as many people that I felt comfortable communicating with. Um, okay. There was a lot of people that were sort of intimidating for me to talk to that I felt like, you know, just, um, I get, uh, you know, uh, messages here and there from people who are like, uh, what bars do you run or how should I route this cable or, or something like that? And, uh, you know, just let it be known that it's okay to ask those types of questions. But right. I think it's best to, to reach out to other riders in the community right. and try to uh, gain as much knowledge as you possibly can. Uh, don't be stubborn when you don't, you're not knowledgeable about the sport. Yeah. Um, and uh, I don't know, I mean, stay safe and you know, just <laughs> learn as much as you can. Be a sponge, you know? Right, yeah. Go around, think, go around those guys and but yeah i think as much. communication is definitely the biggest thing um when i first started getting into just street bikes alone i mean um i'd run into you know joe schmo down the street or whatever and he would ride with me and then i'd meet his friends and go ride with them but you learn something new from every single person that you ride with um, everybody has a different riding style everybody has their own preferences how they set their bike up you're basically saying just be be a sponge be around yeah. the dudes that you want to emulate ask the questions that you want to ask and yeah just I guess keep, just all keep meeting yeah. people communication yeah and meeting people is the biggest thing um so the biggest city by you would be detroit of course yeah what is um what's their bike life scene like out there i've i haven't been i really want to go i understand that the scene's unique out there in a lot of ways um it's tell, a, tell me about it it's, it's the motor city it's most dominantly um four wheelers and dirt bikes that's kind of it's kind of like so uh, bike life. Yeah. I'm not going to compare it to another city, but if you were to compare it to uh, what, excuse me, what type of bikes are there? It's kind of like Philly or okay, like even New York is just real heavy with dirt bikes yeah. and quads. And uh, I think all the all those riders have their own you know style to them. Riding a dirt bike and a quad is completely different in um, yeah. every aspect as it is to riding a stunt bike and it takes a lot of skill for really anything so right but yeah it's mostly deer bikes and quads okay but we do have like uh quite a few street bikes that are in de around the detroit around area the detroit area but the guy if you if you're going through detroit yeah 100 nine times out of ten dirt bikes you're gonna quads. run into a dirt bike yeah. quad scene okay that's that's kind of what i wanted to know there yeah so a lot of the guys on street bikes are kind of like out in the outlying suburbs and stuff like that. Yeah, just surrounding cities. Right. It's kind of like scattered all over the place. There's Got a it. scene of stunt bikes, groms, even dirt bikes and quads that are as also in Grand Rapids. Yeah, I was but about to say Grand Rapids. Grand Rapids in Detroit is probably most dominantly like where riding is gravitated towards right. in Michigan. The, the big cities. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Okay. On to the next thing. Uh, what do you think is the one or two things in the stunt world uh that's preventing it from growing if anything comes to mind if if nothing does then then nothing just um it's not that i think it's uh a, an extreme weakness um i think everybody's guilty of, uh, of it at some point um i think a lot of people engage in uh, a lot of drama and uh, my, I myself, I'm not perfect. Uh, I do partake in it sometimes. You know, I'm not. I'm not perfect by any means. Everybody uh, has a say and an opinion and is entitled to that. But uh, I think 
um, just from when I've started scent riding to how many cities and people I've met through this whole riding game, it's definitely uh, been an eye opener to see how many people I do know uh, engage in just just bullshit drama, you know, and just right. like argumentative points back and forth on Facebook or Instagram or, oh, you didn't run this oil or you're a dumbass because this or uh, uh, discouraging younger riders because they're not experienced or because they're argumentative because they think they know how to set something up a certain way and somebody else disagrees with them. So I don't think that it's a, a huge weak point um, in riding, but I think that it's definitely not very helpful. Yeah. I think that, um, you know, and like I said, again, I'm not perfect, uh, you know, but I think that it's definitely preventing certain yeah. people because certain people just need that extra push to, it, to get it literally ready. goes against exactly what you were talking about before this of communicating with others it goes yeah. if you're if there's drama within the scene and this dude doesn't want to affiliate with that and this yeah. and that it exactly does the opposite of the thing that we were just talking about helps us grow yeah. you know is communicating with others and and you know whether that is what handlebars do you run or you know solving whatever happened outside of the lot the other day whatever um communication is definitely key i like that what out of town rides did you go to in 2020 or this past year what are some of the out of town ones i think the first ride that i attended in 2020 if i can remember correctly well not it wasn't a ride but um <laughs> i always i uh, travel out to cleveland to go see my boy McLovin. Okay, yeah. Um, rode on Cleveland, and then um, I went to Fort Lauderdale, flew out there for okay. a, it wasn't a huge ride, but that was an organized ride. And then, Fort Lauderdale. Where else did I go? Came here for Lean Chicago. Back. Okay. Yeah. And then I went to St. Louis, or no, not St. Louis, that was 19. Um, <laughs> where else did I go? Texas. We went to Texas, yeah. Went to Cali for Ride of the Legends. Yep. And then Orlando for okay. um, for winter winter vacation. vacation. Yeah. Got it. I think that okay. I think that nails it. That's all a solid that. lineup. Yeah. That's a solid lineup. But I, I came ones. out here to Chicago a few times to ride. Yeah. Just, just for the weekend, just pop out. You came to Grand feels like you came to Grand Rapids for Murder of the Mitten. Murder of the Mitten too, yeah. Came to Murder of the Mitten. Yeah. yeah. That was my first time riding out in Michigan. That was a good time. I, I, I got you. nothing. Yeah, <laughs> I got nothing but love for the Michigan dudes, yeah. man. Everyone treated me like family. That was cool. Yeah. Although you took a nasty spill, yeah, that sucked. That was a nasty one. But uh, other than that, I like Michigan a lot. Yeah, it's a fun it. place to ride. Um, I wish there was more cities that we could ride consistently in Michigan. But Detroit, you can ride. Um, I'm not really familiar with the city too much, so I don't mm -hmm. just go out solo and ride. But um, Grand Rapids, uh, I have a few friends down there that ride and it, the city is a lot more chill than any other place I've ridden right. in Michigan as far as streets go. What do Detroit cops think of stunt riders? Um, it depends. Uh, it's kind of just cop by, the by cop basis. Yeah, yeah. It's really by the cop. Uh, yeah. you know, we've had some crazy days where you know, mm -hmm. they'll come right in the oncoming traffic with mm. you know helicopters and jump out of the cars and try to tackle you and some days you just get cops that are just wave at you or some days there's just none that you pass you know so right i mean detroit's a crazy city i mean there's a lot going on but yeah it depends on the day depends on uh, the person i think for the most part it's it's pretty pretty laid back <laughs> i think they um the beginning of the season and the end of the season and maybe like right dead center in, in the middle of summer they get pretty aggravated that uh bikes There's are out so all the time out, yeah but it depends on the group of bikes how many bikes hmm. um you know yeah i always think that the crime in the overall city has a big dictation on the way those cops are going to be you know so I would think of stuff like Detroit or St. Louis or Chicago, and you would just associate the cops are on to bigger and better things, you know, and then not you go, and it's not, it's not always <laughs> the truth, yeah. but I mean, overgeneralizing, I haven't been to Detroit, St. Louis and Chicago for the most part, I have seen her kind of that way. Um, but then you go to other cities and it's like, 
holy shit, we got yeah. it really good here. You know, like there's there's other cities that you might as well have just shot at a cop if you do a wheelie on the street. You know what I mean? Like that's yeah. how aggressively they're going to chase you. So I think it definitely, like I said, again, it just depends on the person. Uh, I mean, it's the same thing riding out here sometimes for me. Yeah. There's not been a significant difference that I've really noticed with um, Detroit as far as other cities go. Yeah, um, I've definitely even thought that there's way hotter cities than, than Detroit, obviously. Um, mm -hmm. I could just name a few off the top of my head, but I definitely think that uh, Detroit's a pretty chill place to ride. It's not a, it's not a very, very hot city to ride. I gotta and come. Depending on where you're riding. I gotta come. All right. Um, what do you think your biggest accomplishment um, is in riding so far? Like, as far as your riding, you know, career has gone. I think just for me, riding as far as uh, an accomplishment is just acquiring a family of friends. Okay. Um, I think that's, that's awesome. a huge uh, part for me. Uh, is extremely important for me to keep in touch with. Uh, certain individuals that I've met, um, not you know, I, not everybody is uh, extremely close to me or uh, to the next person, but I think that um, as as far as accomplishments go, that's a big accomplishment for me. I've uh, definitely wanted to grow in the community more as a family and friend type deal um, yeah. with each person, and um, it it goes both ways. Uh, when you're traveling and you need a, a place to stay or you know you just randomly want to get out of the house and uh, take a vacation or whatever and uh, you go see you know your homie and cross the country it's just super cool to yeah. to bond with people just simply over riding yeah. um, another accomplishment I think I've made is just trying to see the world uh, I definitely did not do any type of traveling before I started riding. I actually only had uh, traveled out of state one time to um, see my twin sister graduate from the Marine Corps boot camp. Wow. <laughs> and besides that, I never went anywhere for vacation. So stunt oh. riding really opened my mind to traveling and now it's just like an addiction. I just always want to be on the road. Obviously, always love coming home, but it's yeah. definitely huge for me to um, accomplish starting traveling while I'm young, while I can do it. Those are awesome. Yeah. Those are the two best answers I've ever heard. <laughs> Love it. Appreciate it. I think that's the best part of stunt riding right there yeah. is the friends you make. For sure, 100%. These are guys that are gonna, you know, push your bike 10 miles for you, or they're guys that will literally, um, I'm still almost almost done with this one. They're guys that are gonna carry you into the hospital. They're guys that, you know, will put you on the back of their bike when everything else is going wrong in yeah. your life behind you, you know, whatever. They'll, they'll risk it all for you. So it's important to have that community and that's definitely probably the the best part of stunt riding mm -hmm. is the people, the friends. Absolutely. You gotta trust those guys. You guys, you have to. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta. Um, ooh, going off the uh, crash. What's your craziest crash you ever had? Craziest crash? Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't too long ago, I would say, yeah. I think the, I mean, as far as uh, mentally, as, as mentally shocking as it was, <laughs> uh, I was riding my buddy's 636 in the lot. Oh, yeah. Yeah, just kind of a freak mistake. And uh, a buddy of mine, uh, we were going the same direction, and he turned left. And when he looked over his shoulder, I had already been coasting right behind him, and I was going pretty quick, oh. and he had slowed down. So it was just an accident. Nobody was really at fault more than the other. Uh, it's just simple lot etiquette uh, for the both of us. You know, I could have been, you know, paying attention to my surroundings more, and you know, obviously looking over your shoulder, turning left in front of somebody that's going straight is just obviously a big no-no. So, but all respect to you know those that were involved. I'm just glad. I'm okay. He's okay, but um, I didn't really get banged up on that one. Um, Did he? Uh, yeah, he he got some road rash, but uh, yeah, he got the wind knocked out of him and was laying on the ground for a hot second. But um, to my knowledge, I don't think he got a concussion or anything severe like that. Wow. So no broken bones or anything like that. But uh, I think that Grand Rapids crash was definitely kind of nasty too. Yeah, I, uh, jumped into I was in. Uh, Frogger, scraped Frogger, jumped in the spreader, and when I jumped in the spreader, I blipped the gas, yep. and my finger just 
flipped right underneath my handbrake. Oh, I just couldn't reach it. I was just sitting there like trying to grab it. And I knew I was going to fall like as soon as I couldn't grab my brake. Yeah. So I kind of just floated in spreader and then just kind of fell down with the bike. No, but yeah, that was a nasty one. I got quite a bit of road rash on my ass and my leg from that. But I haven't really had any... Uh, I haven't really had any severe crashes, no broken bones from- No, no broken bones? No broken bones. From no broken body. bones? Nope. And you've I, been doing it for three years? I my ankle pretty bad at the lot one day. I uh, was doing a circle and uh, the bike, the nose kind of dipped down and I didn't gas it enough. And I kind of like blipped the gas and I jumped off the side of the bike. And when my uh, foot hit the ground, it just kind of tumbled. And I thought for sure that I broke my ankle. I did never go to the hospital, but when I, uh, three months down the road, it was just constantly just like randomly, it would just, I'd wake up and it'd be in so much pain. Like I'd have to put a brace on for the day. And I went into the hospital and got it checked out and they said like it possibly could have been fractured before, but they weren't certain because of how it like kind of, you know, was still swollen. Yeah. So they weren't really sure, but no broken bones. That's not really not had. I mean, I've definitely had a fair share of uh, close calls on the street and in the lot um, for crashing almost, but never really had uh, a really, really bad crash. That's really set me back. Well, you're one of the few. Yeah. You're one of the few. Definitely. Yeah. For right here. None of that. Yeah. You might want to <laughs> knock on it. Yeah. You might want to knock on that, we'll my knock guy. Again. Yeah. <laughs> Holy crap. Yeah. Most stunt riders, if you're listening, most stunt riders and especially guys that are beginning to stunt ride, expect some broken bones. Right. Expect breaking wow. bones, expect um, road rash, and hopefully you're doing it in the lot when you're learning stuff. But man, I mean, just in the lot days alone, I've seen a, quite a bit of broken bones. Yeah. You know, I, th we're throwing around 400 pound bikes with steel cages on the outside that will, if that bike lands on you wrong with those steel cages, the steel cages in that bike are gonna win 10 times out of 10 when it comes to you versus your body, yeah. you know, unfortunately. So. Have you ever have you ever been, cause I know it happens to me quite a bit and I can think of like, especially I can think of a crash or two that like I really went through my head with what, you see a crash and you're like, why the fuck am I doing this? Why right. the fuck, what the fuck? <laughs> like I literally have like been on crash scenes like where there's like limbs hanging or like, you know some really gnarly shit yeah. and like some of it's preventable some of it's not and like part of you has to think as a human being is like why the fuck am i doing this why yeah. the fuck am i still doing this you know like it's definitely <laughs> it's gone through my head runs through my mind uh i recently had a, a conversation just the other day with my cousin just uh called me and was just like i'm just worried about you man right and just got real choked up about it and uh you know it's really heartfelt uh, i really feel for my family as far as you know as much as the yeah. next person they love you it's a dangerous sport and that's just what comes with it you know but every once in a good while i do kind of sit down and i uh, think uh coming back after a ride where i've seen even you you know a uh, crash on the expressway or just yeah. absolutely front flip over the bars and it just be a life-changing moment where you know nothing's the same again you know you could lose that individual and they were really close to you so it's definitely something that runs through my mind uh, from time to time but have you lost any friends to riding um i haven't personally lost anyone at home but uh definitely um you know a few riders in the community yeah. that i've been close to that i can call friends that we've lost together yeah so. yeah definitely it's it's unfortunate the ones that we have lost it sucks mm -hmm. but um all right i'm not gonna end on a bad note though uh you want to say anything before we end this do you want to where are we going to see you next what are some of your rides for this upcoming year what are some of your plans what are some of your goals and any companies backing you or anything uh, I just want to give a big thanks to uh, Mike at Freestyle Life, always hooking me up with fresh gear. Um, everybody's got their opinion of uh, what team they want to rock or what company they want to rock, but uh, always been super respectful individual to me and uh, Cox Stunt Parts. Always Ugh. love rocking with them. I've been rocking with them for probably about two and a half, three years now almost. Fuck yeah. And. Um, yeah, man. Matt's think, the man. Uh, my goals for this year is definitely to 
hit as many rides as I possibly can. Um, I kind of took a step back from riding over this winter um, and traveling because um, my bike's been down getting a new uh, motor and, and such. That's why I'm out here this weekend. But um, my goal is to uh, get out of the country this year. I've never been out of the country, so that's one of my bigger goals. Um, and oh, yeah. kind of just stack some bread and uh, travel as much as I possibly can. I'm um, going to ESR in Texas on May 1st weekend. And then less than a month. I plan on going to ROC. Not sure what's going on with that, but yeah. <laughs> we'll see. And then um, maybe Dub CC in Vegas, okay. June twelfth, I think it is. Oh yeah. And I'm not really uh, too certain on any other dates for rides. I gotta look at the calendar and yeah. Stunt News or whatever. Shout out Stunt News. Yeah, Stunt News and that ride calendar, Thank man. You. He's been putting in. Yeah, yeah, that ride calendar is dope. I'll definitely be adding an event That's in uh, late July. Idea. Be adding an event to that calendar in late July. You might want to make a note. <laughs> yeah, yes. might, might want to be Obviously, there. Obviously, I'm coming back. I know, I know to that. To my second home. Yeah. Gotta say that. All right, guys. <laughs> um, I appreciate everyone tuning into the podcast as always. This is uh, definitely cool. I This is 100% content. I know if you can't see it or not, this is 100% unwritten, unscripted, just two friends kicking it this is the easiest content in the world for me to make so if you're watching this and you're enjoying it let's keep the ball rolling so if you guys like the video make sure you give it a like if you're new here uh please subscribe and uh leave your comment down below of who you who you want to see on next if you want to check out my guy chase tipping back on instagram and youtube awesome dude to follow total killer in disguise. Gotta get up on YouTube more this year. Yeah, and uploading on YouTube. My goals. I was actually just talking do to it. somebody about it. I, I really want to get a GoPro and try to get do some it, do it, do it. POV footage. I've seen a lot of people have been rocking with like the Insta360. You're, you're a good talker, stuff. man. You're a good talker, dude. I try, man. I get a little nervous on camera. But. Talk, talk a little <laughs> bit, man. People want to hear, hear yeah. you talk, you know? So, yeah. all right, guys. I appreciate everyone tuning in. We're getting out of here. Peace.